Well, hey, you. Welcome back to the podcast. This is podcast episode number 205, the one where we're going to talk about three ways you can grow your email list. Now, listen, before you're like, wah, wah, that sounds about as exciting as watching paint dry. Listen, if you have not been paying attention on social media, um, let me just refresh your memory. <laughs> I've had some things we've been watching um, go down on social. There are plenty of people who are having their accounts put in like Facebook jail. There are people being removed from different platforms. If you um, are somebody who's in any sort of like business groups online, you're well aware that Etsy takes people down on occasion. Like um, there are all sorts of examples, regardless of how you feel about it. Like regardless of if you think they should or shouldn't be taken down, the truth is, is that if you're only building a business on social media, which belongs to somebody else, right? It is not your own real estate. It's not yours. If you're only building a business there, you're building a business on like shaky sand. You know, and the Bible's always talking about, we got to build stuff, you know, with a foundation. And so a foundation of a business, by the way, I feel like I'm yelling. So let me just back this bus up, but I'm super passionate about this. And the reason I'm super passionate about it is this, because I see women who are building their business and they're only using social media and they're only using a free Facebook group and they're only using, you know, um, Instagram. And then something goes sideways and then they show up in my DMs and they're like, what do I do? And I'm like, I've been telling you for years to have an email list. Or maybe they've started an email list and they haven't grown it at all. Or I just haven't been able to somehow convince them of how important a list is. You have to have something that like you have an ounce of control over. Now, uh, caveat, there are some email providers right now who are, you know, putting some rules into place that um, uh, just trying to make sure, well, they're just putting some things into place there. I, I know of one email provider in particular who's saying, you know, if you've got hate speech going out in your emails, yada, yada, we can take it down. So, so this is even, you know, something not that you totally own, but you have more control of your email list than you ever will over your social media. You're not going to get your hand slapped for copying and pasting the same thing in a bunch of different places. You're not going to get your hand slapped for, you know, um, and, and a lot of people, like we have several people in my next level coaching program right now who are in Facebook jail, but don't even know why. See, the thing is like, sometimes things happen, glitches happen. It's not, it's not even necessarily that they did something, but all of a sudden they're left without a way to communicate to their clients, which means they could be left without a way to make money. Okay. So growing an email list is, is so stinking important. It's so important. So that's what we're talking about today. So I want you to grab your pen and paper because I'm going to give you three tips to grow your email list. Um, but first, real quick, I'm going to read a review for this podcast um, by someone, I'm believing this is a business name called Tokyo Blossom. And it says, Jen, I just discovered your podcast after reading Fear is Not the Boss of You. And let me say, I don't think I've ever listened or read anything more fear or mindset related that was both so brutally honest and yet compassionate. As I read your book and listen to your podcast, I feel like I'm hearing words from a friend who care enough to say what we need to get unstuck. Thank you for bringing exactly what God has to um, bring to us so that we can get unstuck and do the same for others. So Tokyo Blossom, first of all, thank you for leaving a review. The reviews matter so much. They help us to get you know incredible guests on the podcast and um, advertisers and all the things. So thank you. I just pray a blessing over you your family, everything you set your hand to. I pray that God would just give you increase, more authority, more influence in Jesus name. So, all right. So um, I'm going to tell you just a two second story. And if you've been following me for a minute, you'll have already heard this story. So just bear with me here on, on how I really discovered that um, it's so important to have an email. So it's kind of like one of those things where You know how sometimes it takes like a health scare for you to be like, okay, fine, I'll drop the sugar. Okay, fine, I'll drop the 20 pounds. Okay, fine, I'll start to get more rest. Like sometimes it kind of takes a wake up call, right? I mean, if you're, if you're leaning a little more to the hard headed, sometimes you'll hear things and you'll hear things, but it actually takes something to happen before you're like, okay, now I get it. So several years ago, I did a post on social media that went viral. It was fabulous. It was on Facebook. It was back when we had the red box movies and somebody put a $5 bill in a red box and it went viral. And like the blaze interviewed me and it was in all these cool places. It was amazing. Okay. Anyway, so a lot of people were reaching out to me and all of the things. And right about the same time though, um, my Facebook page one day, I go to open it up and it's gone. 
There is no, at the time it was still called the magic brush, my painting company. There was no magic brush. And I had, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers and I was completely freaked out. It's, it's a very vulnerable feeling when you go to open up the thing that you feel like is yours, where you talk to people and you converse with your clients and you make new clients and, you know, something you've been putting a lot of focus on for years and it's just not there. And you've got a message saying you violated some terms of service and you're like, what in the even what? Okay. So that's what happened several years ago. My Facebook page, because back then when Facebook would, you know, slap your wrist, they didn't give you a date you'll be back up. And so all I knew was that I didn't know many other people who were in Facebook jail, but I was. And now what? I hadn't really built a huge Instagram following. I didn't really use my Twitter. Um, Pinterest was great for giving me traffic, but it wasn't great for making sales. And so I was kind of in a conundrum, honestly. Three days later, later, it magically reappeared. I'll never forget it. My best friend, Laura, messaged me. I can remember the client's house that I was in. She's like, honey, your Facebook page is back. And I'm like, oh my gosh, glory to God. That was scary. Now it was during those three days that I was like, okay, I know I've had an email list. Um, I know that I, I do a decent job of sending out regular emails, all the things, um, but maybe I need to like really take this more seriously and actually try to grow my email list. So at this point, we're hover right around the 100,000 people on my email list um, because we've actually put some thought and some focus and some effort into it, okay? So I'm gonna give you three tips on how you can be growing your email list because it's so important. If you have anything that you're gonna sell, you better have an email list. You better have an email list, okay? So first tip, number one, is you've gotta have a juicy freebie and you've gotta have more than one juicy freebie. So back when I was growing my email list for the paint part of my business, we did some freebies like get my top 50 paint colors that you can take into your, um, to the paint store with you. So they were like printables. Okay. We've got some juicy freebies right now. Like if you want to subscribe to have some wallpaper on your phone, um, we've, we've said that out in some emails. So people are like saving some scripture and some encouraging words for their phone. We've got freebies that are, um, let's see, we've got one on how you can get the first chapter of my book. Fear is not the boss of you to go to jenniferallwin.com slash subscribe you get chapter number one emailed right to you. Now you're on my email list. Um, we have some freebies uh, for startup businesses. Like we have a bunch of different ones and it shouldn't be the same one like for years and years in a row. I mean, hopefully you're evolving and your strategies getting different and better and times change and lives change. And so having a good freebie is so important. Now you could have, um, your, your getting people on your list could mean, um, your freebies, I'm going to give you 15% off of your first order. How many of you have landed on like a clothing boutique site? And it, you know, they've got a pop-up right away to get 15%, get 10% off your first clothing order. That's a great freebie. That's a great way to get people on your email list. Okay. Let me tell you, it's not a great way. Be the first to know when I do something in business. <laughs> Stay in the loop about everything that's happening here at Team Allwood. That's a really bad noise. And if you're watching me on YouTube, you're seeing my facial expressions. Subscribe to my newsletter. Nope. Be in the know. Nope. Um, stay up to date. Nope. Um, let's be friends. Nope. None of those are getting people on your email list. And let me tell you the psychology behind it. Because if you, if you will think of like how the brain works, it'll make sense to you. How often do you go someplace and you're checking out? That's the checkout noise. Like you're checking out at the counter. They've rung up your total. That's $58 million. Sign here. And can I get your email? And how many of you pause? Because you're like, dang it, I don't want to give out my email. I do. And so I've gotten, you know, in, in the last several years to where I just say, I'm sorry, I don't need any more emails, but thank you so much for asking. Um, but if they say, hey, can I get your email and I'll send you a coupon for 30% off your next order? I'm like, oh, okay. So it's Jennifer at, blah, 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 blah. you know what I mean? Like it, so it's a different psychology because people hold their email dearly. They don't want more crap sending, you know, in their DMs or in their uh, inbox. They don't. And especially right now when people feel already overloaded with life and politics and the virus and kids at home. And it just feels big already. And so, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm doing an unsubscribe fest over here. Like I, how'd I even get on this list? Delete. How'd I get on this list? Delete. So I'm only giving my email out in exchange for something I want. That's the psychology. Hi, 
Stella. If you're watching me on YouTube right now, Stella's Stella's wanting petted. So number one, you need a juicy freebie. It could be a discount. It could be a coupon. It can be a trick. It can be something special you get. It could be a special podcast episode. It could be um, chapter one of your book, like we're doing. It could be um, a special report, an industry thing. It could be a tool that they need, but you've got to have something in exchange for something. That's number one. Um, number two, another way that you could grow your email list, run a Facebook ad for it. So here's what that looked like. It, you've got that freebie, right? Like I have a special report on, you know, how to, um, I'm trying to think of an example that somebody in my coaching group has instead of an example as mine, a special report on, um, how you can grow your business right now using Snapchat or something like that. Um, you could put that as an ad on Facebook. <coughs> so literally when people are on Facebook at night, they see an ad. Ever think about growing, um, ever think about growing your business on Snapchat? We've got the top 10 tips to help you do that. And so you're putting money behind it and it's showing up in the feed. You all know how horrible the reach is on social media right now. It just is. It's in the gutter. It's dumpster juice in the words of my boys. I very rarely, Noah and Easton, get to say dumpster juice. So mom just got to say that. And now I'm kind of, now I'm kind of excited. So <laughs> the reach on social media is dumpster juice. <laughs> that just feels fun. It just feels right. So, um, so, you know, sometimes you got to pay to get people on that email list. I will tell you this, your email list will convert at a higher percentage than your social media ever will. Because the people that actually give you their email, they really want to be there more than the people who just like you on Instagram, like you on TikTok, like you on Facebook. So run an ad. There's some big marketers that do a fabulous job of this, of, of running ads to their freebies. Because they know that when they, once they get people on their list, that they can usually convert a percentage of those people over to their program, their group, their membership. So then it's a numbers game. How much does it cost to get somebody on my email list versus what will a percentage of people pay for? So let's say it costs you, let's just say for easy math, $100 to get 100 new people on your list. Well, let's just say you've got a 10% conversion and these are just crap numbers that I'm pulling out of my head. So 10 people will probably buy your course and your course is $1,000. So if you have 10 people that buy a $1,000 course, you've just made 10 grand but you spent a thousand on ads, right? Or what was that a bad example? Did I spend a hundred on ads? I don't know, but do the math. If you know what you can convert off of your list, then you'll know, okay, on the next launch I do, I want to make $5,000 or $50,000 or $500,000. Okay. So how many more people do I need on my list to do that? Okay. Then what do I need to get them on my list? How much money do I need to pay in ads to be able to convert a percentage of those to actual customers? So running a Facebook ad to get people on your email list, a decent plan, a decent plan if you know your way around ads. Um, third thing, you're going to have to talk about your opt-ins in all the places and all the time. So here's what we have found that some of my clients do. Well, I, I sent somebody to, you know, my freebie a while back and I only had two people sign up. Okay. Well, what's a while back? Well, like last month, well, have you done it this week? Nope. <laughs> have you done it this month? Nope. Okay. And you're, and you're, are you thinking people will magically find it because the, that happens 0% of the time, like gone are the days where people just stumble onto you on the internet. They really don't. They really don't. They find you because other people recommend you, or they find you because something's got some traction and people are sharing it, which is a recommendation of sorts. And literally, if you're watching on YouTube, Stella is being really high maintenance and she's just standing right here next to me and she just wants petted. So I'm so sorry. You're just, she keeps putting her head in my lap. And this is, this is where we're at right now. I'm podcasting and petting. <laughs> hey, that's actually a really cute name. Okay. So you've got to think of it as this, like, um, you've almost got to get like sick of seeing you post some of your own stuff. Like, Hey, I have this new freebie. Like, let's take my, um, book example. Okay. Like you can get chapter one of my book. So when we were really pushing that on my Instagram bio, the link in bio was Jennifer Allwood slash subscribe. That gets you your free book. So in my stories, I was saying, hey, if you'd like chapter one of my book, swipe up right now. Or if you don't have 10,000, that's fine. Say, send me a DM and I'll send you the link and they have to opt in. Um, and then I would do a post on the actual Instagram feed. And then I would do a Facebook post with an actual like, hey, if you want chapter one, if you're not the boss, you do this. Then I would do a Facebook live. Then I would also put it on Pinterest. Like you can't just do Facebook and Instagram. 
Pinterest is a great way to grow your email. Also going back to Facebook, your pinned post at the top of your Facebook page should be something like, Hey, and it's not, Hey, do you want to get on my email list? It's, Hey, do you want to read the first chapter of fears not the boss of you for free? Cool. Here's the link and I'll send it right to your inbox. That's how you position it. It's not get on my email list. Cause nobody's going to bed at night going, good Lord. I just wish that I could get on a few more email lists. Nobody's thinking that nobody's thinking that. So think like your clients, right? Stella. Yes. Isn't she the best? This, Stella, everybody, queen of England. She's literally the best dog on the planet. Okay. Let me give you two things I want you not to do. Or is it just one thing? It might just be one thing. I was thinking I had two. Okay. We're just going to do one. Don't do a contest to grow your email list. Yeah. Gross. No. Boo. Don't do that. Don't do that. You saw this one time, this one girl in your industry did it and she got a couple thousand new people on her list. But guess what? Those are people that are in the cheap seats, like people that sign up for contests. They're not your ideal client. They're the people that I, and this is what I always say back when I used to do the home show, like that's where I first met Chip and Joanna Gaines and um, got to meet some really great people off HGTV. The guy that does, the, I was thinking the other day about the guy that does the, uh, the uh, tree houses, the tree house guy, is that show even on? Let me know on Instagram if that show is even on. But um, there would be people that come to the home show only to get the free grab bags of goodies that they would take out of different booths and to put their name in the fishbowl to get free gutters on their house, to get a new you know, air conditioner on their house, to win a four-wheeler, which why is that at the home show? To get a free set of sheets. Why is that at the home show? Anyway, <laughs> squirrel. And so the, those are the people that sign up for online contests. Those are not your ideal client. Your ideal client's like, you know what? I'm going to pay for something. And the people that are coming to contests, they're not payers. They're poachers. They are. That's not who you want to put your product in front of. So what they're going to end up doing is they're going to be dead weight on your email list. They're going to be dead weight on your Facebook page. Also, don't forget that there are terms of service to running contests on every platform. Make sure you know what they are. If you're going to run any sort of a contest, run it on something like Rafflecopter, but don't run it. Just, just trust me on this. Okay. There's, there's, you just don't want to lose what you've built for a contest. No, don't do that. That is a, there's a smarter way of doing things. Okay. So we're not going to make people have to get on your email list in order for them to be able to get a free pair of earrings. That is not a good way of growing your business and growing your list. So, all right, friends, has this been helpful? I hope that this has. Now, listen, I want to tell you that there's no point in growing your email list if you're not going to use said email list. And this is just a little bonus tip for you right here. Okay. Some of you, you're like, okay, I have a list and, um, but you don't do anything with it. Well, then what was the point of growing it? The whole point of growing it was to use it. And the number one thing women come to me and say is, well, I don't want to bug people in their email. Honey, they gave you their email. They did it willingly. <laughs> They're like, here, it's yours market to me. That's what they're saying. Like, you've got to remember people are not dummies. The people on the internet are not dumb. They, they, they know full good and well, I'm giving you my email. I'm getting something in exchange for it. I bet you're going to send me an email. They know that now that you haven't emailed them, they're like, I can't believe so-and-so isn't emailing me. Actually, they're probably not even thinking of that because they're not even thinking of you because if you don't email them, you're off their radar. So if you're somebody who hasn't sent an email out in two years and you've got a course coming up, a launch coming up for a membership, a new product, um, you're reopening your store, something like that. And you think you're just going to now send out an email and it's like, titty, titty, da, I'm back. There's going to be so many people who are like, who, who is, who is this? I wonder what I signed up for. They're not even going to remember because they did it two years ago and you have fallen off the wagon. So listen, get back into the habit of emailing people. They gave you their email address knowing full good and well you were going to email them. If they no longer want your emails, they will unsubscribe. Listen, we don't pay attention to unsubscribes. We don't pay attention to unfollows. You want to know how many unfollows I had this week? Just because I talked about how irritated I was that, uh, you know, the chief stadium um, is full of people and then power and light district in Kansas city is full of people partying and my kids can't go to school more than two days a week. I know how I, I lost a ton of followers over that. Okay. Those are my people. <laughs> you know, I just, I, I don't know what to tell you other than if you're going to grow your business, you've got to be okay with you not being for some people. I have zero idea how many people are unsubscribing 
from my social or my email list on a daily basis. You want to know why? I don't look at who, and I'm not looking at who's not for me. Stop focusing on that. Well, if I email people too much, they unsubscribe. Okay, bye. Get more people. Those were not your people. You're focusing on the wrong stuff, girl. Okay, so get people on your email list and then use the email list. Actually send out emails. Send out emails. Send out emails. Some of you could double your revenue this month if you just double the number of emails you sent. There you go. That's a word from the Lord for someone. You want to double your income this month? Double how many emails you send. Bada boom, bada bing. It really is that easy. Okay. I hope that this was helpful. This was fun for me. And um, yeah, share this with a friend who owns a business, will you? Just push the little forward button wherever you're listening to podcasts right now. Share this with another friend who owns a business because she needs to hear the same thing. Building your business only on social media is building a house on shaky sand. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're putting yourself, your business, your family in jeopardy. You've got to have something that's yours. You've got to have your own website. You've got to have your own email list. All right. Bada boom, bada bing. Thanks for being here, friends. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.